In today's video, the differences in training men and training women. What are the physiological differences? What are the desires as far as difference? And what are the hormonal differences that affect recovery? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com and today we got Steven Bogrand. Do you guys know what that means? Science with Steve. Mm. Be sure to check out Steve's YouTube channel below if you wanna learn a little bit from someone who has a master's degree in exercise science. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the sex differences between men and women when it comes to training and we're gonna back it up with a little bit of research. Just a little bit of research. Yeah, so <laughs> I think you, you, you sent me like 10 to 12 studies Yep. We're going to pull from three main studies, and we're also going to talk a little bit about experience. Steven and I happen to coach quite a few female athletes. In our space, we've coached them through powerlifting, through bodybuilding competitions. We've both had competitors earn IFBB pro cards. And so the, the goal for us has always been to improve our ability to train our athletes. Of course. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about the things that we've learned. Now, I already know the answer, <laughs> but I want to help everyone that's that's here understanding how we design our training programs, what goes into it when it comes into the, the mindset, the physiology of a female athlete versus a male athlete. Um, and that's what's really neat about some of these studies is that they're not just looking at what's the actual physiological difference between a men and a women. Right. It's more to it than that. Some of them for sure. And I do think that it's really important that we understand the impacts that social lives and kind of our society have on those same training preferences and how we're gonna go about that. So the first study we're gonna talk about is the 2022 study. It's pretty recent. Yeah. And it's actually probably the most relatable to, to what we do because it's something that we experience as coaches. Yeah, and then I think what it talks about is that men and women tend to be motivated to train for different reasons. Men tend to be motivated to train for things like hitting new numbers, being competitive. Women tend to train for reasons like body composition, attractiveness yeah. to some degree, yeah. uh, which is also interesting to me because when you look at some of the other data that's out there, what you see is that women actually have a much better response in terms of overall self-confidence and self-worth when they get stronger and men do not have that same response, even though we see that with their motivations. Yeah, and I think, you know, speaking from a male perspective and coaching a lot of men, um, putting on size and getting stronger are two really big factors in us as men that we want to be able to compare to like, you know, the old saying, how much you bench. <laughs> you don't really ever hear women saying that. Never, never. Right? How much you hip thrust. Now, I will say what women tend to focus on is like, damn, look how good she looks in her leggings. Yep. Right? Whereas I've never said that about you. That's kind of bonkers. <laughs> so the point being here is that, yes, there are some differences in the actual kind of motivations behind getting into training. And that's something that when we consult with a client, it's very important to us. Yeah, because if you're setting up a training program that's all upper body focused for your female clients, well they might not want to stick to it very long and they might not like the changes as much as if we really focus on lower body and particularly right now, glute development. Yeah. And so even if you're training a, a female athlete with more lower body dominant things, you might be doing them a disservice if you don't understand that they are focused less on overall leg development, more on glute size, which is the very common trend right now. Yeah. And you know, in terms of competitors, you just have to go to what the standard is and what that yeah. individual needs. Yeah. So for us as coaches in a certain division, like the bikini division or the figure division, you have to understand what the, the standard is, what the requirement is for training that athlete. But as far as like a societal difference between men and women, I think the best way I can sum it up is very few women have chest day on their plan and very few men have glute day on their plan. Yeah. I don't know a lot of guys that um, have a really developed lower body and a very less developed upper body. Yeah, that pretty, guy, pretty normal the, for the other way around. That though. one guy on Instagram <laughs> with the big pants. But yeah, I mean, outside of Brett Contreras, I don't know many men that are so focused on training their lower bodies and kind of they just train their b upper bodies passively, even though Brett's been doing a glute and shoulders now. Maybe he's trying to do bikini. <laughs> but like I've never really focused much on my no. glute development. It's more been around the performance of a squat or a deadlift yeah. or building the overall development of the legs the glutes just happen to come along with it. And I think that's the big difference. Yes, absolutely. The next study that we're gonna talk about is a 1993 study that talks about the gender differences between strength and muscle fibers, okay? So the idea here is that, you know, I think the perception would be that men have a lot more muscle fiber and they're a lot stronger, women weaker and smaller. But when you actually get into the data, what, what do we actually see? So when you talk about absolute numbers, 
you're actually correct because most men are gonna have a heavier body weight. So they're gonna have more muscle just in general as part of that. When you look at things relatively, size for size, pound for pound, as long as they have the same amount of muscle, things are gonna be relatively stable across both genders in terms of performance and their ability to put on muscle for the most part. Now, there are some differences that those hormones will make in terms of my ability to recover well versus a female's ability to recover well. And so when we see female training programs, a lot of times they're very high volume. Well, the females can get away with a bit more volume because they are going to have less protein turnover based on their genetic differences or their gender differences. With that being said, it means that they're going to also have a better oxidative capacity, which means they're gonna be able to get away with a little bit less rest in between sets. And they're probably gonna be able to train the same thing maybe a little bit more often than a male. But again, we see that typically in normal programs, whereas a lot of females will have you know, lower body three days a week with two upper body sessions sure. and males will do push pull legs. So each thing's only getting hit twice a week and they're getting to maximize their recovery throughout that. Yeah, I find it very interesting that the, the women relative to height and weight are almost ideally the same. And something I remember from being in school with the USF was that actually women tended to have a little bit proportionally better response to lower body training than men. Yes. And men tended to have a little bit better upper body response. But when you talk about relative, you know, head to toe differences, they're pretty similar. And I don't think many people would assume that. Yeah, I think that a lot of, again, the social differences have a big impact on that, what yeah. you're motivated to train. Uh, but also there are other impactors of modern medicine that people utilize that are probably more common within the male subset of people who are training uh, that are also gonna have an impact on that. Yeah, I mean, and even just talking about like the cultural and friendship differences, you know, I remember as a young guy going to the gym with my friends, it was a lot of piss and vinegar. It was a lot of trying to set PRs and show each other off. And I, I, I'm sure there are some women that, that, that kind of get caught up in that, but I don't see that. I, I see it mostly with women. They're going to the gym to look better, feel better, and perhaps be a little bit social. So maybe a little bit of a difference of motivation in the gym plays itself out longer over a long period of time. Of course. And you have to also understand that Historically speaking, for exercise, most women's exercise has been a social environment of group classes for a long time. Toning. Correct. And so even though those things can be great, it does change when we start looking at yeah. more true to form resistance training individualized. Well, in this video would not be a true representation of, of women and how they were represented in fitness if we didn't talk about the idea that women get bulky when they <laughs> lift weights. <laughs> if only it was true. If anybody just got bulky when they lifted weights, you and I would be super bulky by now. I'm not bulky. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, buddy. So actually, like if you look at, you know, some examples of our competitors, which we'll put in the video here, you can see that these athletes are eating optimally. They are training optimally. They're sleeping optimally, sometimes for a decade or more, yeah. and they are still not bulky. It is not going to be represented in uh, a bulky fashion if you are l training heavy and eating well. Now, you put on a lot of body fat. If you go down a path of like, maybe you wanna be a strong woman or a power lifter and body composition is secondary to performance, that's where you may get that confusion from, but it's not as if all of a sudden you're gonna lift a weight and, and start to be bulky. Yes, and again, absolute terms, women are gonna have less muscle mass than men. So it's just not something that you need to worry about. Plus your genetics are gonna determine how well you do or don't respond. And we are working within that. Yeah, and, and one thing I've noticed as well is I, I almost feel like women are almost hyper responders to performance enhancing drugs. And now with hormone therapy becoming a thing, I think it's more available. And when you see a smaller framed female get on some performance enhancing drugs and you see their muscularity grow, it's almost, uh, it's, it's really like a hyper responsive state where they look super impressive. Now, that may not be what you're after. It might just be for them, but it's just something that I've noticed being around physique competitors that because of their smaller structure, maybe smaller wrists, and they look super impressive in person. Yeah, and I think it also has something to do with being lean. Anytime that yeah. you're leaner, all of the lines in your physique are a little bit more defined and it's going to make you look bigger. You and I yeah. both know, nobody tells us we're big when we got a t-shirt on, but if we're in prep and we're close to a show, yeah. as soon as that shirt comes off, 
everybody says how great people yeah. can help. Yeah, and people. so well, I'll, I'll actually highlight two of my natural competitors that that uh, Lona Dunbar, who just won the competition at the Ben Weider to go to the Olympia next year. You can see her here, obviously a natural competitor, not bulky. And then Alexandria, who won her pro card at that same show, same thing. You know, these women are training hard, eating perfectly towards their goals. They're not looking anything but very feminine. Right. So let's talk a little bit about a, a 2010 study. It's very interesting because they focused on the bench and I think that'll come into play with yep. some of the results. So describe what they were looking at in regards to recovery time. So essentially they were looking at how long it took each individual to recover male versus female. And it was interesting because the females recovered much more quickly than the males. Being at around four hours post-exercise, they were doing pretty well with doing that exercise again and performing well. And the males needed roughly 24 hours to perform reasonably well again on that same exercise, being the bench press. Yeah, so for me, what I would have to know from this perspective is how much effort they were putting into this session. Because if you and I go in and do a particularly heavy, like, bench press session for a, for a powerlifting program, yeah. um, I mean, sometimes it can take two or three days to be recovered. If you asked me to do that session again in four hours or 24 hours, that's gonna suffer. Yeah, and I think one of the other things that I would keep in mind with this study is there was only a three week uh, acclimatization period. So three weeks of those individuals being in the gym, doing that exercise. It would be much more common for males to be more proficient in the bench press. I would say most females I know don't do chest work or bench press at all. So my expectation from that would be that they're probably seeing more of the uh, neurological improvements there in terms of how you recruit and do the actual movement versus the males that were probably getting a little bit more out of it in terms of creating hypertrophy and muscle damage. Yeah, so it's 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 not a study that you wanna to put too much into, but yeah. along with all the other research that we found um, up around the idea that women probably do just recover a little bit better than men. They do, and that's probably due to higher estrogen levels, that lower protein turnover, and again, that higher oxidative level where they're just able to use more fat for fuel versus carbohydrates for fuel. Also, maybe we can count it as women aren't as stupid as men, and they don't <laughs> honestly, how many times have you had a male athlete go in the gym with a program and they report back to you that, you know what, coach, I was feeling good, so I just went for my max today. Yeah, too and You're like, you were supposed to do three sets of five with 75%. Well, I will say this. In my experience, most women do follow the plan a bit better than some of my male clients. Now you know why I coach women mostly. All right, but the idea here is that Although there are some differences, I don't think they're as big as most people would expect them to be. No, when you come down to the brass tacks of it all, the same things that grow muscle for men are the exact same things that grow muscle for women. You have to utilize progressive overload, you have to lift at a high enough amount of 1RM or close enough to failure, and you have to do the work. Whether you're a male, whether you're a female, it's the same thing. We go in there, we work hard, we get out, we recover. Yeah, and so I just like to think of it like this. Pecs are equal to glutes for women. Like that's really what it comes down to. You know, not too many women are worried about how good they look in a t-shirt, okay? You know, so it's, a, so it's a little bit of a cultural difference. Now, one thing I've seen some other cultures, it may be a little bit different. Some other gyms, it may be a little bit different. So you're gonna find pockets, but I think generally speaking, the way I see things right now, women are more concerned again with, you know, looking good and feeling good. I think men towards, tend to gravitate a little bit more towards the, like getting as big as they can and getting as strong as they can, at least for periods of their life. Yep, I would absolutely agree. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. We've been doing a weekly video discussing women and the sport of bodybuilding, women's health, women's hormones. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover, let us know below. We love to dig into the research. We love to learn a bit more to support you guys. If you are looking for a coach and wanna set up a free consultation, I'll put the link below at prophysique.com. Be sure to check out Steven's uh, YouTube channel, as well as our podcast, The Pro Physique Code. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.